Hello everyone and thanks so much for the support on my last video. Your encouragement means a lot to me. In today's video, I want to show you something I've been working on. A trainer that works with multiple games that use the same engine. If you're interested in learning how to build something like this from scratch, then leave a comment and let me know. I'd be happy to create a tutorial for you. Without further ado, let's take a look at the trainer. All right, so I wanted to show you guys what you can do with pattern scanning and byte scanning. So I've created this trainer for gold source engine games. I can show you what it does. It says here, gold source PO. Uh, I actually left a breakpoint by mistake, but I'll improvise here and you can see all of this or these watches that they are addresses that I've picked up. So I have picked up the R function. Oh no, it's a function. I have not confirmed it's an R function, but it's the function that has the instructions of what accesses uh, a variable that either tells us if we're grounded or if we're in the air. I've also uh, found or pattern scanned for the force jump function. So this is, I believe it's the create move function, the gold source engine, but I call it force jump function here. And when I have found these functions, I can read the specific instructions which hold the addresses to a very simple bhop trainer that I've made. So if we remove the breakpoint and run it, run it again, hopefully it will. Oh, I don't know why it. There we go. So gold source bhop. And if I open the game and just hold space, it be ups. I don't know what's happened there, but I I don't need to scroll. I don't need to jump. I only need to hold space. So it's a fun little trainer. But the cool thing is it works on multiple games. So if I and we're here. I can start my application again. And it will still work. But in this game, they have removed uh, momentum. So if I be up here, it, he will just not move. But it works perfectly on ground. Maybe I got the wrong address, but as you can see, it works on many games. You don't need to rewrite your code or get different addresses. You just need a signature that's working for your game and the other games. So how I found this signature, I need to close. There we go. So, how I found it was by, let me attach it to Half-Life, there we go, and that, that needs to be updated. Uh, how I found it was by right-clicking and find out what accesses this address, click yes, stop, take one of these instructions that hold the address move ECX and then the address or something else. Then I, because these instructions, they are similar. So if you take this and uh, create wildcards for these addresses, you would uh, 
get the wrong address here, you would get this one or this one because they are basically the same but with different addresses. So the fix I found was just to go back to the beginning of the function and take this instead. So as you can see here, it starts at 90, do nothing. And then it goes on to 8a, 0d, and so on. And you can see that it matches here, 8a, and then wildcards here, because uh, the other games had a difference here. So if they're different from the bytes, just set it to a wildcard. Wildcard is ff in, sweat, in the sweat library. If it's different, ff, then continue with what works. So here, 0 free works, 33 works, d2 didn't work, it was different in the, uh, in the other game. So I have alt card again, and 84 worked. So create a signature that works, and then I just read the address that was in the Ah, oh, now I closed it down. Can I? Uh, yeah, there we go. So, to get the address, I just read it as a pointer. Client.dll plus. So on, because it's four bytes here. Just read it as a pointer. And of course, offset it from the base of the function. Uh, if you want me to go through this, from start to finish let me know in the comments but uh, thank you guys for watching I hope that this helps you on creating pattern scanning for your trainer see ya